If you have not acquired some sort of beverage um, over at the bar, you should definitely do that. Yes, there are non-alcoholic beverages available as well. Um, all right, so our second feature this evening is a resident of Kent and a graduate of Cleveland State University with a focus on creative writing and modern American literature. When she isn't attempting a new piece of fiction or poetry, she spends her time serving drinks at her favorite bar and finding new ways to perfect her brownie recipe. I recommend peaches and shredded zucchini, actually. Coffee is the trick. Please welcome Marissa Catherine Hi! where I time myself so that I'm not like, wait, what are we doing? All right. So actually, I wrote this today. I'm calling it Rissa the Blue Period because there's a Rissa Rose period that is in this set too. There will no longer be any love stories for me to live. This is not a lament. It is a statement of purpose. I will gladly swoon and swell particularly for songwriters, filmmakers, and those taken by my color and countenance, and only then. For I refuse to write romance in mind on paper or for others to dance out. But I'd be happy to inspire some to have that goddamn song written about me because I now know I am able able to descend into the static of snared pseudo-artists and scramble then straighten their sincerity into something that suits me better. All right, uh, so uh, my best friends in this corner will understand that I've had a weird couple years. Super weird couple years. Um, and I've been working on a series. It's called My Boyfriend Wants Me Dead. And if anyone wants to help me edit a weird pro series about domestic violence and sexual violence, oh, let me know, please, because it's really hard to do that. Uh, this one is called My Boyfriend Wants Me Dead, part one. Maybe misunderstanding me when I said, I have tried to die and can't, a look like condescension crossed his eyes beneath his glasses. And he spoke to me as though we had never giggled against the other's skin or planted strawberries on his grandmother's land. Find a better rope or a better gun, he said, dismissing three or four teenage suicide attempts before lighting another smoke. I sat then running a finger along the rim of a beer can or whiskey glass, recalling the story I'd told moments before, and wondering what it was about me vomiting act activated charcoal onto a hospital floor that made him smirk so. Was it really ridiculous? Because I felt it then still so strongly, even speaking it there with a decade gone since, and he dared to tell me to try again, but harder this time. Mm. I told them it was gonna be kind of dark today, so bear with me here. All right. Um, this is a love poem to my backpack. A floral print backpack full with years of debris and today's necessities, I still feel so young, with both straps wrapped around my shoulders and short shorts exposing my legs to midsummer sun. This could be any year in the last 10. Traveling between Northeast Ohio cities, three in a day and maybe a fourth by night. I could still be a gloomy stoned 20 or a bright, reckless 25. I've always had the same name, but the way I speak it has changed. No one has asked yet today, and I cannot tell you my age in this instant. 
wrote it when I first moved into Kent, which is three, four years ago. I can't find a home on a map. There are six or seven dots that look familiar, that look like a place I slept. Maybe I paid to be there, or maybe I made dinner for someone who did. Either way, I can't go back. But this new, this now, still seems like slipping through a sieve because I'm scared as anything that there isn't anyone to love me here either. Every other Ohio city just dragged the light from my lamp, and if there's no one in this unquiet college town that has a match for me, then okay. There's no one. I'll find or fake my own fire so I seem less cold, less dim, less like a person I don't want to be. Ooh, this is a dark one too, but it's an old one. All right, it's called attention. I have a plan to accidentally set my house on fire with the piles of clothes and china cabinets. No terribly disfiguring scars though, please. I will not survive and you will see it on the news along with the sports. Or a seemingly minor car crash with no with one wrong steering wheel head but maybe just an elegant gash and that's all i want to die pretty and alone you'll still drive too fast around curves maybe i can watch the aftermath a funeral where everyone must wear gold laugh in hushed voices well very drunk but maybe not could be like you said and nothing happens when we die except dirt. I want to have everything. A dramatic exit, satisfying revenge, bone and dust and eternal life in the form of an every night nightmare from which you wake feeling a lonely alive. And I will be happy to haunt you if I'm allowed. If room at the window there is, if there is a window at all out there, if not, is it worth the theatrics? Having only the expensive box and stage makeup? It wouldn't be better than sorting laundry, collecting bottles, taping colorful cutout letters onto wooden floors that no one sees, painting lines onto my eyes, beautiful, and also knowing the weight of those things. Let's see what I got. Uh, no, that's not the one. All right, let's do that. It's called falling in love when you're clumsy. I have not done anything on purpose since I was 23, when I break up bleached my hair. It is not that I have an opposition to intention, but when you are accident prone, making plans is just scattering shattered bones or pressing a purple bruise. And when I ask to be kissed for the first time in more than a month, snow making me seem as something more, it was because I didn't know how I felt. There had been no determination of the difference between longing and crossing my fingers. So a kiss becomes an impetus, a new set of feelings, a flood that my body requests no levies for. And I fall again, or truly at first. It was no harder before, though a set of circumstances in place to tear through some years built chance spent code, or hope that always acted in place of backbone, all of it so easily fractured, like my wrist once or, or an unknown number of toes. I didn't know a lack of calculation amounted to a careless life, or that it was better to live a future than spend time predicting it. I still know when my knees will get scraped, yet I think now I will stow bandages in my pockets a step towards purposeful. I must have been 
real dark earlier when I was picking out poems to read. I apologize, because they're all the dark ones. All right. I, this one, I, homies back there will appreciate. I have always done my day out, like my night out, like on Sunday nights. And there's a poem in my first chapbook from Writing Nights called Melodramatic. And this is not it, but it is the nearly 30-year-old Marissa version of it. It's called Lukewarm. <laughs> to explain strings of light to stars, and the girls with eyes like lullabies as saints, no longer revelation. Instead, it is a familiar sweater of soul, striped with liquor-dipped ribbons, coated in fine golden glitter against the wool pearls. The breath of Sunday was once salt crystals forming, gods descending, the, air, the broken air of too much smoke. It looked the way black coffee tastes, as warm and uninviting as a stranger's car, though no objections held. Now a night, begging for off-season flowers weaved into braids and champagne stuck there, bursts before the stage darkens. I set myself up so I'm going backwards in this. This is called a second ghost. One. I dreamt you were dead, and I lived telling people I don't know all about it. Details in waking memory escape, but it was sunny. I wore shorts. Two. I can't hear anything except a voice like yours, but sure of more. Music mute, conversation dull around me, the sound a laughing hum. Three. I didn't find the gun, but I searched my brain for where you might hide those things. There is nothing locked in that house. Nowhere to stow away secret pieces. All right, so th this was the origin of the first piece that I did. Uh, Sky and Az have heard it plenty of times and have both written responses to it. It's called Self-Portrait or Rissa Rose Period. It's from June of 2012, apparently. I want a goddamn song written about me, or a poem, a piece of art in my honor. I'd like someone to want to remember that I exist, to craft the lines using a glimpse of me from their brain that they saved for future use. Something like smoking in the passenger seat, handing them my words, or sleeping, my hair in my mouth. It would be shaped with the sound I make after I laugh and the yellow green my eyes seem in certain light. Oh shit. This is me swimming in narcissism, not just dipping my toes, but submerging my body. Because I want affection. Because I'm fucking afflicted with disease of the mirror. I can't stop staring. And I'm tired of snaring every wasted waste of my time pseudo-artist that can't even tell me what a sonnet means. Not what a sonnet is, but how it seems sonically when read for the right reason or written for the right purpose. I want sincerity. I want more than just pictures in my head of the way I might look through the looking of someone else. <laughs> All right, going a little faster than I thought. This is called Artifacts. I snap up pieces of you, the little details, pure empiricism, maybe not. Some seem missing, though. Could I find them if I tried? Could I excavate your ruins? I dig through broken strings and books searching. If I found them all, I'd sit still long enough to archive my collection, though not for public viewing. But were your shards to stay lost, I'd use art instead of archaeology to put you back together. I could fill in the cracks with pen ink and acrylic, any colors you'd like. Mm, this 
says the first ghost, essentially. Uh, first one I read was the newer one. They're based on like weird lucid dreams that I've always had. And anytime I feel fucked up, I kind of do the same kind of series. So ghost, one. There's fear in me, a friend, a better than nothing feeling, afraid of fur and the cold and honeycombs too. Is that sweetness? Terrified that there's a person I'm not seeing, that I'm not finding, that I can't stop looking for. And they're waiting. I'm impatient. There's always a shadow while I sleep, looming about in my room, not a ghost, not the past. So it's from the future then. Back to take from me the things I shouldn't become. That's nothing. Shouldn't be empty like the last drink of the night or my chest opened with a capacitive knife. Two, when I wear this pink dress, I sleep on my couch or at least close my eyes there Open them not knowing the city in which I dreamt or the year in which I am. It's a school day, maybe the 10th grade, and we might be late for the first bell. A stranger's sofa, some time near now, a how did I get here kind of last night. The future moment of my death, trying to wake but falling back. I'm slipping in then out of my life. Creaking open the doors. Three. My hands don't work the way they should. They seem made of water, and there's nothing to look forward to except exorcism. Of just loose paper in here. All right. Defense. Drunk and wearing a dress in public square, waiting on not the last 20 of the night, but one of the last. Headed home to OB alone, wearing headphones or not, strangers speak to me. Older men mostly, with work worn hands, nails chipped and sooty. I know this because I look everywhere but their eyes. Some wonder where I've come from, but short hem, flashy boots, doll lashes, dead giveaways. Almost all ask why a boyfriend would let me travel alone. There are lies for answers. He's at work, he's out of town, he's out with friends. I don't have a boyfriend. There are forced numbers regardless. I'll spend the next three weeks hitting ignore. Maybe one head southwest too and insist on the second seat of my bench. Sitting so close, I press my palms into my thighs to hold my dress in place. My legs feel cold now. I smile, I laugh, I'm supposed to. Other passengers meet my eyes, I force them to. There's a hand on my shoulder that shouldn't be there, and the late night crowd is silent. Two more, one kind of long. I wanted to do Babel, but I couldn't find it. I, I It wasn't in my stack of shit. It's somewhere, it exists, and I could probably do it from memory, but I'm not gonna do that. Um, this is called He and I, and it's in a chapbook that as published uh, like seven years ago. He and I. Let me ask you a question, he says. How can someone who doesn't believe in love write so many songs about it? Just a question. A serious, well-timed question. And really, I mean no offense. Me. I wish I could ask him about all his questioning. Because there are hidden intentions in every question, an agenda. And doesn't he know I don't believe in truth either? I much prefer lies to truth. That's something I don't question. So what do I believe in? I'm sure he's wondering. I believe in the power of words and wonder. But I say, do you ever wonder why we feel like we have to ask so many questions? And he sits, 
staring with still wonder. A strange sight, this thing in all his wonder. Here, now, I worry about why I can't seem to love him like I should. A coarse girl left to wonder about all his glorious grace and supposed wonder. Then they say that doubting him is a terrible offense. But you know what? His constant queries are an offense to me, no matter how great his wonder. Okay, so I don't know if that's true. Then I think about that word, truth. First thing, a pencil and paper, that's the truth. Maybe I'll make a list so he doesn't have to wonder. The hum or, of chords or riffs, mostly truth. A burning cigarette between my fingers, always true. Oh, do you still have questions? Late night laughter, early morning runs, no vices, truth. Cold beer with still hot pizza, easy truth. This is not to be mistaken for love. These simple things would be made complicated by love, and though I don't believe in it, I understand truth. Contradicting myself again. A great offense? I don't give a fuck. No offense. He says I didn't mean any offense, that he really just wants to hear the truth. Even if that word is pure offense. Even if the thought brings me to disgusted offense. I can't say I hate believing him to wonder, so I will wish away all my offenses and be ready, be on the offense. Perhaps I will answer every question he asks with a question of my own, hoping his stubbornness causes no offense. And still, I will pray that despite my doubt, he will love me no matter what I think of love. I shouldn't even speak of love, because my ignorance on the subject is a great offense, especially to all those John Cusack movies everyone loves. I know less about love than I do about truth, though I'd like to dare to say that I love the idea of mixtape romance, of boombox at my window passion, of love affairs like in movies. But he wonders, can these things exist for the wonderless? Do you even know how to love? Still, he goes on with even more questions, a soliloquy of endless unanswerable questions. And so I'm done answering his questions, because if he loves me like he, they say he does, then it'll cause no offense. He'll be happy with unspoken truths, and I'll be happy with my again silent wonder. Ooh. I haven't done that one in a long time, and I forgot that it's kind of hard. What, a can zone? Yes. That's yes, yes. a new larger thing, right? One more. I'd like to say thank you guys so much. I was super happy to read with Danny. Saw them a couple weeks ago when we read in Canton and was like, I gotta read with them. And then it happened almost immediately, which is a beautiful thing. Oh, uh, this one is called Selective Hearing. It's my last one. I listen to you on the radio while full of gin and tonic and all the limes the bar had sliced and ready to squeeze. You rush through the monologues and play songs I didn't know I liked, but there's some lack of feeling here. Shouted political conversations mean I can't hear, and I'm too lazy to move nearer to the radio. Created is a static in my ears that I'm starting to like, and my eyes begin to blur on the little line of on light while fuzzing out self-righteous monologues that my brain is too full to squeeze in. It's got so many moments of being squeezed by spinning calloused fingers in it that I mishear half of all of the trite debate. Then I flip to inner monologue instead of trying to focus. It's hard enough filling in radio silences with things I could be saying with the slime slick wit I say I have. And you said you liked more than the ums and the whats and the like I don't knows that everyone is always trying to squeeze between their words as though they were the lime garnishes on glasses. A pause. Just because we're adhering to some old fashioned way of thinking before speaking like radio programs so scripted and censored that the monologues are just the same as every single unreturned text monologue about missing playing co-host on Saturdays and about how I like you more without clothes and about getting trapped in radio waves and any other cl collection of cliches I can squeeze into 140 characters. A waste. As if spending time here with the talkers wasn't useless enough and as if the lime syrup in my cocktail could ever replace real limes. Did you just say you can't waste music time for monologues that aren't even funny? Probably would be funnier than jokes said here about CNN scandals or, and about how likable that candidate would be if he could squeeze some time out of national public radio. 
you're funnier while sharing the limelight. When radio call-ins are spitting angry monologues about you squeezing insults here and there, which I pretend I don't like. Thank you guys. Thank you, Marissa. Let's give it up for her one more time. Do we want to take a quick break before going to the open mic, or are people just going to do open mic? That's a lot of mess, so we're going to move on to the open mic. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so if you have to go to the bathroom or, you know, get another drink, then just do that when you need to do that. Um, let's see here. How many open mics do we have? Who would be interested? Okay, I see half a dozen hands. All righty, very good. So who would like to go first? So if somebody wants to go first, come on up here. If you are ambivalent enough about going first, and you'd be willing to go first, then come on up here. All right, so looks like Daria is coming yeah, on up. Daria! Woo, let's give it up for Daria Quinn! Hello, my name is Daria Quinn. I am a poet based out of Canton, Ohio. You can follow me on social media. I am Daria Quinn at, on Twitter and uh, Facebook.com slash I am Daria Quinn. Uh, help support my art by following me and caring about things I say. <sighs> Nobody wants a picture of your dick. I feel like I have to keep saying this because you keep sending me these pics and these pics are making me sick. I don't want to see your dick. I don't want to see my dick. I don't want to see anybody's dick. So stop sending me your dick pics. Dick? <laughs> uh, this next one, uh, also about unwanted penises. It is about a, a WWE wrestler named Enzo More who got fired for allegedly raping a woman in, in Arizona. And the human piece of shit that he is. So. <clears throat> a consensual penis, you say. <laughs> that's funny because that's not the story I heard. The story I heard was that the cops ended the investigation due to a lack of evidence. That's not quite the same thing as an exoneration. In the U.S. alone, only six of a thousand rapists ever see a jail cell. The fact that you would probably escape free of rape charges was almost always a guaranteed certainty. But that doesn't make your penis consensual, nor does the mental capacity of your victim. Every time a woman accuses a man of rape, the world immediately attacks the woman first. No other crime gets this sort of public reaction. If a person is accused of robbery or murder, no one is crying out, innocent, do proven guilty, while simultaneously making it, out, out, making it out as if the victim actually wanted to get robbed or murdered in the first place. Well, maybe he wanted to get killed, but you know, then got Myers remorse the next day. <clears throat> <laughs> we treat rapists as if they were above the crime. You don't even need to be a celebrity for the world to let you off the hook, but it certainly never hurts. You got lucky, man. Don't you understand that? They figured your victim was cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs, so the cops decided that seeking justice wasn't, in, wasn't worth their time. Because <laughs> they're dicks. You fucking raped the girl. <laughs> but women don't just lie about this shit. And they sure as hell don't go public when they do. You weren't proven innocent in a court of law. You were the beneficiary of a system that doesn't take rape seriously. And in the wake of this revelation, you put out a rap song threatening to sue your victim, all while claiming that so-called false allegations hurt the Me Too movement, claiming to be an ally of women when all of your actions and lack of insight show that you only care about yourself. You claim to be the real one, certified G, bona fide thug. <laughs> You're a liar who brags about his consensual penis 
I mean, the truth of the matter is that the rapist, and you got away with it. Thank you, Daria. Let's give it up again for Daria. So there is a book club in Akron called Chicklets. Uh, I don't know how many of you may have heard of it. It's for women, femmes, non-binary people. Um, and I just read on Facebook about how several cisgender men decided to approach the woman who runs it and verbally assault her for how she's excluding men and men are being discriminated against. And they're exactly the reason why fem spaces exist. Because <laughs> um, that's fucked up. The phone rang, and the masculine voice asked for Skylar. You got her, I replied. Who's this? Todd. We met three days ago, he declares. Really? I don't remember a Todd. Where did we meet? I ask. Stadium Park. And this was three days ago? Todd? Three days ago, I was in Chicago. It wasn't me you met in Stadium Park in Canton, Ohio. Oh, I did meet you, Todd insists. Hey, Todd, can you describe me? You're a soft-spoken Latina who likes to eye flirt and has a bubble butt, about 5'1". Oh, now I know what's happening. Todd, I know who you met, but it wasn't me. You met my friend, Sarah Hernandez, but I didn't tell him her name. Apparently, Sarah not only didn't like you, she didn't feel safe telling you to fuck off. So she played along. She gave you my name and phone number when you asked for hers. So Todd, you must be a scary creeper and I'm breaking it to you because she knew I would and was too scared for herself. I did remind Todd not to despair. Sarah would have made up everything if she didn't want you to know eventually what was going on. There must be hope, so Todd, read some feminist books and blogs, learn what respecting women looks like for real. Then I called Sarah. So, are you okay? Good, good. Next time though, please do let me know when you want me to let down a creepy stranger for you. I got you, I promise. It's just nice to know how scary this next one might be. Or if he really is femicidal, your number is 911 and your name is Escape. <laughs> Who is next for the open mic? Don't all rush the stage at once, I tell you. Right, Keith is on his way up. All right, give it up for Keith. Woo. All right, thanks. So I'm going to read you one. This one's called We Both Got an F on our animal eating test. <laughs> Vegans are weird, or so I've heard, through overblown infatuations with protein. Talks of celestial powers bringing animals into existence for that very reason. Man's arrogant claims of superiority. Don't be naive and ignorant, blinded by sentiment. Animals are to eat, they tell me. Let's include a simple computation as we examine this argument. Start with 5,000. The number of mammal species, rounded down for simplicity, Mammals aren't alone, we need to add in birds. So 10,000 species with feathers plus 5,000 hairy bastards. Now math class is just a shady memory in my distant past, but I think I can handle this one. 15,000 animals. Oh wait, we need reptiles. That's 9,000 species there. Shit, I've got to carry a one. Uh, um, I have 24,000, I'm done. Fucking fish, 27,000 of them. Seven and four is 11 once more, two twos with that one. 54,000. My math teacher would be proud, if only I could remember her name. Amphibians, those weird motherfuckers who can't just pick a home, 7,000 species still to add. Four and seven, carry the one, damn, where's my calculator? Change the five to a six, 61,000. Insects, you've gotta be kidding me, do they even count? Two million? At least we get those zeros. That's 2,061,000 animal species in the world. And you eat what? Four? Cow, pig, chicken, turkey? Okay, maybe you eat duck, crab, deer, 
walleye, carp, salmon, trout, tuna, lobster, shrimp, rabbit, lamb. I can still count that on my fingers and toes. Maybe you tried turtle once, alligator or squid. I'll even add in an extra 10 for any I might have missed. Now, let's round that up to 30. Maybe, just maybe, you've eaten 30 species. 30 out of 2,061,000. Now, I don't need long division to tell me that's not even close to 1%. Wait, you said I was silly. You went on and on about protein. You said God gave you animals to eat. You're slacking. So wash down your double cockroach horse burger with organic llama milk. Dip your blue jay wings in delightful gecko sauce. Serve your orca salad with shaved donkey on the top. Skunk jerky, kangaroo sliders, guinea pig and spider stew. Animals are for eating, you sentimental fool. Beagles, bats and beavers, baked or barbecued. Falcons, fleas, flamingos, fresh or fondue. Tamils, cats, canaries, and a creamy casserole. Mosquitoes and maggots, marinated, microwave. Go ahead, tantalize your taste buds. Crunch, munch, chomp, slurp, chug, gulp. Oh wait, or maybe not eating animals isn't that weird after all. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you, Pete. All right, who is next for the open mic? All right, come on up here. I can barely see you with these lights. <laughs> Hello. Tell us your name. Like the, I don't know. <laughs> the hardest question. Shoot, I didn't, I didn't study for this. Uh, Jim? No, I'm kidding. Hi, I'm John Smart, more or less poet of the future, if you want to look me up on social media and all that special jazz. But, uh, I'm going to do a spoken word poem for you today to explain a little bit of it. Um, I don't know, it's Rick and Morty influence. I, I guess I'll just leave it at that. I also got some anime references in it. I'm a huge nerd. But that's fine. I was going to do it to a song, but I think it hit harder just being heard. Hmm. Sorry for the wait, there's so many different titles. going through all this stuff and I'm seeing the dates and I'm like, how far back did I write this? Like, you write so much and you just forget. And just... Life's nifty. So this is called Shadow Box and Demons. I'm just shadow boxing demons and it got to me in my feelings. Like, why am I heated as I'm shadow boxing demons? I come and come, I come and have my high depression. I shall find a flash anxiety. See, I keep on throwing these spirit bottles just to keep them inside of me. There's no time to charge my key, but I will never take defeat. See, I keep on going KO Kin, but it's only ever in my sleep. I keep away because I'm a cost of liability. I know I'll find the other half, I know it'd be the end of me. I am Hancock, and love is the enemy. Pride is my sin to me, but there is no fear in me. I've been alive for a century, I bounce back from injury. I know you ain't here when you see, I'm here to stop tearing. Now that my goal is clear to see, now I can just breathe. Once I adjust things, I can enlighten. I know that you've been fighting, I know you've been fighting. I see the look in your eyes, and I know you've been hiding. See, I want your heart, but it's all about timing. I only want you when you thought I was lying. See, just know that it's true. That's why it's in rhyming. I'm no longer hiding the fact that I love you. It's one of the feelings that I know is true. I saw God, and she is within you. But I still see pain from all that you've been through. My goal in life, honestly, was hoping to heal you. I didn't want sex. I wanted to reel you. I'm saying things about thoughts that I could be near you. 
You're one of the few things on this universe that I'd fear to lose. I transverse entire universes just to see you. I'm just shadow boxing demons as it got me in my feelings. Like, why am I heated as I'm shadow boxing demons? No eye contact when I'm leaving. I can't look at you because I refuse to believe it. Not the fact that I love you, but it's the fact that I'm leaving. See, I found paradise. But now I'm retreating. I am not worthy to go and see it. See, if I know, I know if I go now, I will never leave it. But since that day, God knows I haven't been breathing. My mind came home and my heart stopped beating. See, depression started, and then I stopped eating. And right around that time, then I could start sleeping. It had been 10 years, but damn, then I started dreaming. And it hit me one day that, God, I could go be it. And this depression, yeah, I could defeat it. And this constant search of something for meaning. I am not this body. I'm the center of being. See, consciousness is life. Can't wait till you see it. I just spoke to Morty and you wouldn't believe it. Nobody exists on purpose. Not even Jesus. Nobody belongs anywhere. Despite what you're reading. Everybody's gonna die. And we give life its meaning. I've buried my own corpse, but yet I keep eating. And I can't believe it, but life is so fleeting. You keep on asking me. Hey, John, how do you continue with breathing? Well, it's called the past, because you needed to leave it. But what about the what ifs? What about the reality where Lee Harvey Oswald shot JFK in the right wrist? Or where Hitler cured cancer, saving the millions that he would have left lifeless? Well, I'll tell you, Jimmy, it's an infinite universe. <laughs> Take my advice, kid. Don't think about it and continue to live. I'd rather be the enlightened than the world of them. You're introduced with everyone, but she's never within. See, she's screaming, I'm chaos. But she still let me in. And after it's over, it's like, I never exist. I hate, I hate, I hate that we can't just stay as friends. See, you love the fact that I can't change, and I love that you can. I'm losing myself while you're lending a hand. See, you left to stay you, so honestly, I can understand. I will be chaos in the form of this man, and since God's dead, God knows it's my turn to step in. I've been changing the worlds with the strokes of my pen. I'm advancing this multiverse that we live in. You can have an army of me, and you still will not win. Because just to let you know, I'm the Jonathan Michael Smart that they all hate within. Lucifer and I, yeah, we could have been friends. He looks at my life and he says he's rather impressed. He's always thought that he was the best. Lucifer's my first hater. But know something now, that he still shows respect because life was a race and he would be next. I overanalyzed the situation and I become ignorant. Lucifer wasn't the only one that was heaven sent. You'd rather rock new clothes than don all your sins. See, I put my pride into my work and I destroy it all when I win. Cause I'll be left with nothing. And I'll still come up with a grin. Cause at the end of the day, I still have my family and friends. But I lost the I lost the one I love. So how could I win? I guess I'll just travel this in the sea of probabilities of my sin. But I'm just shadow boxing demons. As it got to me in my feelings. Like, why am I here as I'm shadow boxing demons? Thank you. Do I have time to do another one? Is that a thing? See, let me find another one for you real quick. Let's do a new one. Um, hmm. Happy song. Do you guys have an like, audio track? Okay. Thank you, I we appreciate should. it. <laughs> Fantastic. Oh, let me find it. No way. Just remember something. Why are you staring at me? Did I just remember that?
Round of applause for this guy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, Jesus, that one. Yeah. Yeah. Two phones. <laughs> phones. Yeah, there's one outside. It's life, I'm always prepared. <laughs> <laughs> Never know when you'll need two phones. It's just, just how it is. <laughs> Could you send me a little bit of something on that? Uh, it's probably not in all the way in to your jack because I'm not getting anything. <laughs> mm, I don't think it will fit to my phone. Maybe I'll cheat. 
Thought is so tempting You come in every single position And these are just thoughts that I placed in the written It's one of the ways I blow off a mission So sparking the blunt just to cut all this tension When I am here, yeah, I feel like I'm drifting On the exit, yeah, I feel like I'm lifting I can live without you, but barely know how to function I can see the ways, but cannot leave this junction I might as well try, cause it's better than when nothing You're dancing with happiness and don't mind if I cut it I'm tired of depression, I'm not feeling anything Injunction. I'm always on the clock, so never needed to punch in this kind of a collaborative dose. Only when y'all feel something, things would change if my heart would just let love in. Please don't ask why you dance on my shutting. I'm lost in these memories. I miss our conjunction. I never do love, so I'm not really trusted. I thought I for one, but it filled me with compunction. Always been broke, just focus on hustle. Show you my art and can hold it means something like why look for love when money's easy to plug you Cause love is the best even when you have nothing Yeah, even when you have nothing Yeah, even when you have nothing Yeah, even when you have nothing But I need to find myself That's it <laughs> Thank you Hi, I'm John, he's smart Look me up as Poet of Future on Instagram or SoundCloud, all that special jazz. Thank you for listening. Yeah. <laughs> You're probably thinking, why is Skylar holding a giant pencil? Why is Skylar holding a giant pencil? And you're asking that question too, instead of just thinking it. <laughs> so, this says, very nice sport fight champion. This will be given out to the winner of all the sword fights that we're doing in Canton as part of the Ryan Knight's uh, literary poetic um, head-to-head -head challenges. So we are going to do a championship round in January, uh, right around Azrael's birthday. And the winner will go home with this. You can use it, you know, as like, you mount like above your fireplace, or you could use it to like bar the door to the attic, or you can use it as a curtain rod, you know, lots of different things. But you have to win it first in order to get any of those options. So talk to Azrael, or talk to me, if you would like to compete head to head against another uh, word related performer. It doesn't have to be poetry, it could be, um, it could be essays, it could be comedy, it could be storytelling, lots of different things. So um, talk to one of us if you're interested in that. I believe Azrael had a couple other announcements. Um, Maybe not. Oh yes. So if you're looking to get in on that sword fight action, um, you can actually uh, potentially be in the September show. It's the second Friday um, in downtown Canton at seven o'clock. We have one uh, sword fight match already lined up, which is uh, Kristen Worsler versus. Francesca Falucco. So if you're looking for two more uh, competitors to go against each other. So if you have somebody in mind that you would love to go against, or maybe somebody that you really just want to beat into the ground, um, then uh, <laughs> then talk to one of us and we will try to make it happen. As far as other announcements go, let's see here. Aren't we doing something special in November, Azrael? Uh, yes, uh, the second Friday we're having a food drive. Yes, food drive. So, it, is that a sword fight as well for that one, or is that uh, one feature? Well, Gabriel Ricard is coming in from New York, and he will be featuring as well as doing a sword fight. So we need an opponent for him. Yes. Yeah, so if you want to oppose the guy from New York. Yep. And then in October on the 13th, which is a Saturday, we're going to set up a small four-person tournament to do at DeBoard's Halloween Festival. Four-person tournament at DeBoard's in Akron. Yep. So and if you want to be part of that, let us know. Marissa is going to be performing the second Friday, and mm -hmm. also in the sword fight. Fight in October, yeah. right? I That'll need somebody to fight me. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> no, no one's interested. <laughs> well, they, they're rather intimidated at the moment, but they will grow. They'll grow a spine here pretty soon. Yeah. I'm sure. Bring it on, y'all. Okay, well, when you get two or no, we'll talk. <laughs> there we <laughs> go. Yes, there it is. We're looking one. for. Oh, hi there, Internet. Oh. Yes, that's Daria Quinn, who has uh, come out on top in uh, two sword fights so far. Dare you. Dare you. When you get your own, we'll talk. We'll talk. We will talk. 
All right, speaking of talking, who would like to go next in the open mic? All right, give it up for this guy. Because yeah. I can't really see him very well. Hi, um, my name is Kate Ga, and I'm from Akron. And all these poems are from a collection I wrote um, for Akron Soul Train. I don't know if you're familiar with it, but I was a resident in March. They give out. Um, stipends to help local artists of all media so if you're interested yeah, in doing something like that please check it out i know they would love to have more writers um this first one is called expectations expectations rule the day can't get out of their way tell you what to think and what to say marching up and down the street strictly marching to the beat Marching hard and marching right, marching in your head in the dead of night. What can you do but find the beat and march beside them in the street? If it was that easy for everyone, there'd be no one left staring into the sun, no one to watch the idiot parade. Thank you. And so, I'm trying not to uh, read too many uh, political poems tonight. Um, I do write a lot of them, though. Um, but this one I call binary, although that's not actually the name. Uh, it's just the name is in binary. So um, and it goes like this. Uh, ones and zeros, signals through electronic pulses, creating tiny dots that make up words and pictures. We st sit and stare at the screen bombarded by bits. Bitten by a data addiction, thirsty for these tiny ecstatic moments that keep us hooked through long spaces of monotony from which we can't draw away, even though somewhere in the back of our brains we know we should, but it's already too late, we're already too enmeshed, insects drawn to a bug zapper. So, my poems are all pretty short, so I'm going to read a, a couple more. Um, this one. I'll be reading as part of the High Arts Festival and at the end of September. It's called Narcissus. Um, and it, this is one that it took a, a while for me to write, but I am actually really happy with how it turned out. So, uh, Walking through time with a rose held to your nose, wearing coats of arms and cod pieces and powder wigs, top hats through the Gilded Age and tuxedos in the 20s, you've always been fashionable. Through the ages you strut and swagger, Never afraid to be the braggart. Holier than the art, you know you are so smart because you've been winning since the beginning in a game with no shame. It's all the same. As you peer into the mirror, it couldn't be clearer. And um, this is the last one. And um, it's called Celebrity Cakewalk, and it's actually, I think, probably the last poem that I wrote for this collection. It's a very last minute edition. Everyone's a critic, a superhero social cynic. Join the parade and let your mind be made. It's time to save the day all the good kids want to play. Take your moment and make it your best. Put your head above the rest. Wait a second and take a breath. Don't get queasy, it won't be easy. Step one foot in the sanitarium, get comfortable and let yourself grow numb. Pull up a chair, all your favorite friends will be there. Just show them what you're about and they'll never let you out. You'll spend your days in the days, it's what you wanted anyways. Thank you. Second time on stage or reading poetry. <clears throat> yeah. All right, I got three shorter poems, I suppose. <clears throat> I wonder if you can. <clears throat> excuse me. I wonder if you can sense sense the things yet to happen, the emotions to be shared. 
Do you also feel the grooves etched deep inside you, the energy shared between us, that feeling of home and the way that only your smile can dance with my heart? Do you feel the space that only I can feel it fill? Do you think I don't see the storms and darkness in you, the scars and heartache, the loneliness and self-doubt, these parts of yourself you turn from and force a smile? That is where I seek to go, into the darkness and into the pain, into every doubt and fear, all the places you smile and say, really, it's okay, I'm fine. It is there I will venture, and it is there I will love you too. And the last one, what if we're all just trying to find who we truly are through all the pain and heartache that life brings? Can you feel it just beneath the sea of mindless entertainment? Those tiny fleeting moments that make us feel truly alive, they spark something in our soul, daring us to believe in a truth we once knew. We're endless energy. We can do anything. Dig deep within yourself, down to the parts of you hidden away. Accept, accept, love, and forgive. Dare to believe in yourself. It's time to change. Who is next for the open mic? All right. Clap for this person whose name I don't know yet. Oh, no. Not no? Yet. No? no? Okay, okay. <laughs> Sorry. Almost got on stage. <laughs> you can still get on stage if you want to. All right. Who, who would like to go next for the open mic? Is there anything I can plug this into? Yes. Oh, yes. Awesome. Uh, There's all kinds of doodads up here. I don't really know how to play it, so we're just gonna we're just gonna wing oh, it. We got a guitar. No, I I got my chord with me and everything. There's probably a chord up there. Also. Sweet. This is a concert venue. Right. I I felt like there probably would be, but you know. It's not too. Hi, I'm Colin Brace, also known as Master Puff, and I'm about to do a back to the right from your faces. You really shouldn't trust people you first meet. Um, <laughs> I, uh, I do a lot of rap with John here. John, well, we, we started off with the poetry. We were rap battling in the school store back in the day, and uh, that's kind of how it started. But uh, I'm not going to do a lot of rap. Uh, I also play some blues guitar because I just kind of picked up the guitar one day and was like, oh, it kind of sounds cool sometimes. You know, whatever. So, I'm gonna give you a good mix. I don't really even know what, what, was, what to expect. I've never been here, but uh, I'm really impressed by the, the poetry that's been shared tonight. Like, for real, you guys, like every single one of you, we're killing it. So, I'm, I'm just really intrigued. I'm moving still. Oh, it'll only hurt for a second. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think I'll be all right. Being plugged into the matrix. I should have probably prepared for you guys. Yeah, it's overrated. Right. I'm more of a wicked Embrace kind of guy. Embrace mediocrity. Right. <laughs> how, how, how do you expect me to fly if I don't wing it, you know? <laughs> yeah, I don't even know if I'm going to be doing a backing track. I'm going to stand up here. Give me a couple of strums real quick. Actually, is your EQ and everything flat? Uh, I got standard tuning. No, I mean like just your EQ on your electronics. Oh yeah, I got it was down. My bad.
getting like no low end. But good enough, close enough for rock and roll. <laughs> right. I'm just here to have fun. To start off, I want to tell you, um, my grandpa, just for the first time the other day, heard me rap. And uh, he hates rap music. Like, he just watches the black and white TV shows on TV all day and, like, just glued the Fox News and stuff. So I, like, it was a really big deal for me to open up and be like, yeah, this is what I do. Um, but when I did it, he said, Colin, you're going to be somebody one day. And I looked at him and I just stretched my scars out to him and said, man, Grandpa, I've been myself already my whole life. <laughs> and he, he did something I didn't expect. And he pulled down his shirt and showed me his scars. And he said, some wounds don't heal. <laughs> and they can't heal while you're dead, so you gotta keep pushing on. And that hit me. And he said, we're disastrous masses in the signing of hard casts. We cover the pain with names and the beauty of times past, but tell me about those time gaps from the bottom side of your shot glass that became the top so often just because you fucking hate class. Now, if I kick the bucket, then fuck it, it's what I wanted. I'm running past all these uglies that's educating the public. I'm sick to my ugly stomach. All I do is lie and love it. That I'd hold the whole planet hostage if it meant the truth in someone. But if you sit the goblet on your high horse, you'll get the hiccups. I feel like I've been at practice too long. I just need picked up. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like I should give up, I'll get moody like Drake, then I remember you and uh, I only live once, so we don't have time to spread hate. But there's blood on the watch of my mama just watch this on Dabba to squeeze up the block, it's insane. Little girls look in the mirror with anger, they hate themselves, and culture's to blame. Man, how many kids, I mean kids, do we need to see hang before we start raising them while using our brains? There's strong connotation in these childish names, but it's all just portrayed as these childish games. I wish that was a fake story too, but <laughs> shit's real. It's really awesome when I go anywhere because my beautiful girlfriend Kelly always comes and supports me and she always gets embarrassed when I say something, but I love her. <laughs> She's beautiful. <laughs> She really inspires me to keep going. She's the hardest perfect person. She's the hardest working person I know. And like, I'll complain about my job to her all day and she doesn't say one thing about hers. And that just says a lot about her character. And maybe a little bit more about mine, but we don't really talk about that. I'm John it up here, I don't even know my name. <laughs> uh, by the way, I'm Master Puff on SoundCloud if you want to get a hold of me. Uh, look for the adorable Pomeranian puppy with the orange background, you'll know it's me. <laughs> um, I fell in love a couple of months ago and I ain't going back. I call her baby girl because I had a crib is where you find me at. She, work, she works out where she's working because she knows the hustle worth it. She'll put love inside a head and she'll put sleep inside insomniacs. I'm like a child opening my gifts on Christmas and every time I see you, it's an item on my wish list. <laughs> I get so giddy. And, I, and I, I know you ain't never been loved right, but when you're in your mind at night, please let me be your sunlight. When everything around me was falling, I watched it all hit the bottom because when we touched, I swore that I could feel flight. Like real flight. The wind through our hair as we stare at the view on a clear night. It feels right, right? My heart asks my head and got a head nod from both sides. Your eyes are stars compared to planets that I've seen. And I don't believe that Venus could receive this love from me. I mean, it's hard believing in a man leaning upon a broken tree, but that's trust, that's us, that's we. Mm. I really don't know why I brought the guitar. It just feels good in my hand, you know? All right, I got one more thing for you guys. Just one more little, uh, really short, lovey-dovey poem. Um, back in the day, back before Kelly took over my life and my brain, I uh, I thought I really liked this girl, and she like 
didn't like me, but I thought she liked me because she kind of made it seem like it. Well, you know, we, we've kind of been there, you know. So, um, <laughs> why are you laughing, Bethany? Shush. <laughs> We're all grains of sand along miles of beach. They are, the grains all look like you. They all look like me. We're the same. But I never know if we'll meet. But everything we believe is everything in the sea. So if we reach to fight the wind to get away from this heat, the sea will find a way to take grasp at our feet. We will become one with the water. We will replace I when we speak. You and we waiting. I'll never know if we'll meet again. <laughs> That's like all I have for you. I just wanted to come up here and have fun. Uh, Thank you guys for sitting through it. I'm just having, I'm just joking around here. I've been up since like 10.30 last night. I work midnight, so I'm going to pass out as soon as I sit down there. So just have a great night. Thank you, uh, thank you guys for having us here. It's awesome. Thank you, Colin. Agile, did you want to read a piece? Yep, yeah, I'll, I'll close up tonight if no one else has anything else. I wanted to read something that is not mine. I wanted to read <coughs> something from the National Poetry Slam that Azrael and I were at last week. Uh, Salt City Slam did this really awesome thing where instead of doing four completely different pieces um, on different themes and different topics, they actually did uh, unified like a concept thing. So the first poet did a persona piece from the perspective of the scarecrow in the Wizard of Oz. The second poet did a persona piece from the perspective of the Tin Man. Third person, Cowardly Lion. And it culminates in a, uh, a duo piece between Dorothy and the Wizard of Oz. So since I am one person, I will try to be on this side when I am doing the Oz voice, and on this side when it's Dorothy. Oh, wanderers of golden stones to nowhere, but emerald jealousy, it is I, the great and powerful Oz. Oh, yellow brick companions, men of broken backs and egos, it is I, Dorothy, the small and meek. Like all men, you ask for a woman to fill what is missing. I just asked for a home that had been taken from me. You turned me wizard, not too far off from which, and now an entire city wants to be painted me. I did not ask to become your savior. You forget, before fire and gates, I was human too, not just intellect. The scarecrow oozed his straw the whole way. He didn't mind, knew I'd scoop it up and sew him back together. Not just heart. Tin Man was Kansas winter cold and cruel, as I've always known men without hearts to be. Not just courage. The lion's roar drowned out every lioness from the east to the west, and still, I called it bravery. Have I not done all you've asked of me? even when you did not know what you were asking. You take and take and take everything that has been inside of you all along. Scarecrow, you cannot ask for a brain, then curse me for the truths you find in your field. Tin Man, you cannot ask for a heart and not expect the brick loud as falling trees. Lion, you beg for courage when you too quaked at the sight of me. And isn't it just like a man to tremble in the face of them? I am nothing more than a circus act gone wrong. Oz, has this been a lifetime for you of taut back, blue and lavender bedraggled eyes, being called up for labor? Is that all I can expect too? Is girlhood a sorcery that exists as a curse on my own self? Is softness a means of servitude to broken men? I realize now, all that is great and powerful is the work done behind the curtain beneath every cloud of smoke. There is a good witch, a lost girl with ruby slippers, a black magic woman, a sorcery that can only be produced from the hands of femme. Oz, I, I introduced myself to you as Dorothy, the small and meek, and I believed myself when I said it. Is this not anything but meek to rescue men and they believe it's companionship? 
Scarecrow, Tin Man, Lion. In your next hour of need, don't call on me or Oz or any willing woman. Call on Jackson or Franklin or Edison. These men have always labored for their own benefit and hope their blessings fall into your lap. Watch them turn emerald into profit. We will tear down the curtain, give every femme behind it the credit they deserve, and we will take every Zelda, every Frida, every Henrietta, every Dorothy, every wizard, every witch, every woman used and left to history's forgetting, and we will finally go home. Mm. And then Azrael wants to close things up this evening, so give it up for Azrael. How's everyone doing? Great. Good, good. So we've had kind of a theme of uh, Me Too-esque pieces. Um, there was a, a lesser known um, movement among men, the I have movement, men who are willing to acknowledge and take responsibility for their transgressions. Um, so this one is short, it has a content warning, but I, I don't get graphic, but I'm kind of, I started writing it. So, I mean, this is, if any, if any of these can be tamed, this would be the tamest, I think. I'm on an interstate bike trip. We've been texting before smartphones. Remember the nine key multi-tap flip phones? My phone had horrible battery life, but I would always use the last drop of juice on telling you I loved you without saying those words. Yeah. We knew each other before I moved away. We kissed touched. I thought we were cool. We sat on the couch, watched The Matrix because you hadn't before. You said you had to go to your room. I asked if I could come too. You said no. I didn't listen. I followed you too close but stayed out of your room. You went in, came out. I filled the narrow hallway with my masculinity. I asked for you, asked for, pleaded for, demanded a kiss. You refused, pleaded against, acquiesced. I let you by, back to the living room. I didn't press anymore, didn't understand. We messed around before. Why well, didn't you want to do it this time? You weren't in the mood. You didn't feel like it. It doesn't matter. You said no, and I should have stayed there. I apologized. I loved you so much I would never say it. My DNA learned something that day. Consent is not perpetual. It doesn't matter that after I moved back, we messed around again. You offered me your body, and I missed all the signals again. All right, so um, during the whole kind of theme of NPS was based on a quote by Gwendolyn Brooks. We are each other's harvest, we are each other's business, we are each other's magnitude and bond. And um, one of the, uh, the first, like the first event we went to, the last chance slam, uh, all the slammers were instructed to write a small piece in that. And I'm like, well, you know what, I'll just write one too because I'm here. Your business is ripe for harvest, reddened tomato, squished to, br to the brightness in the magnitude of the sun. You bind me like squash vines wrapped around sunflowers, pulling me to earth when I try to reach beyond my grasp. Yeah. All right, so this one is, this one's fun. Um, And thank you everyone for coming out and come talk to me afterward. We'll we'll have some good schmoozing. And thank you again to the outpost. <laughs> and thank you again for the outpost. Thank you snacks for them. Tip your bartender. Um, we have books and t-shirts over there if you're looking to buy. Um, books are fifteen dollars. They're the uh, Grand Showcase collection, and then shirts are seven dollars because you're here at a writing next I watched a little girl stand against the wall. She looked down at the ground with her foot on the wall and jumping forward toward the other wall in front of her. I watched her small sprints from wall to wall trying to figure out what she was doing. She wasn't smiling. She was contemplating. I followed her eyes to the floor. Are you trying to outrun your shadow? Mm-hmm. 
Have you done it yet? Mm-mm. Maybe you should try distracting it. There are actually two. She pointed to the other shadow to her left. Which do you think is faster? The one over here. I meet thousands of people every first Friday. We do this thing on our gallery space, add a line of poetry. We set a theme for the month and ask people who pass, would you like to add a line to our group poem about insert theme here? We got our lines filled, we get our lines filled generally, but most people give us a look akin to deer in headlights. They stutter and say, I'm okay, or I'm good, or I'm not witty, or I'm not any good with words, or I won't be good, or I'm not a poet. Who told these people they aren't poets? Who told them they can't create? Who told them to stop trying to outrun their shadow? This isn't good. We are all artists as children until someone tells us we are not. We are balls of energy, small sprints bouncing between walls. At the end of the night, I asked the little girl, did you outrun your shadow? Yes. Thank you. Thank you all very much for being here. This is a monthly event, so come back next month, especially if you have stories to tell. We are possibly going to tip towards the storytelling next month. Bring your storytelling friends as well. Um, buy stuff in the bar, tip your bartender. Um, come to Second Friday down again for the other writing nights events that we have there, and the other story sketches and sounds events that are here at the Outpost. And thank you all very much for coming out. Have a good night.